You ever had a ZJ? <laughs> What's a ZJ? You gotta ask. You can't afford it. <laughs> What's big that man. from? That's from Super Troopers. No, man. no, it's from Beer Fest. Beer Fest. It's from Beer Fest. I knew the line right away, but I wasn't sure. I was hoping that you would forget it, and then you'd walk into my trap. But you no. did not. No. I'm oh, good for you. <laughs> you are sharper than I give you credit for. I suppose. Well, we know that. Okay. You don't give me credit for anything. Is what we. I don't think that's true. No, I think I give you a lot of credit. True. I think I give you... More, no, go on. <laughs> a lot of credit. <laughs> what were you going to say? I think I give you more credit than you... Just <laughs> no, than you think I do, is what I was going to say, uh, but maybe I shouldn't give you as much credit. <laughs> maybe that's a mistake with your big head. Maybe. you know, maybe. Not, not Mike Connolly big. I hope he listens to this, but he's got a big head. Very big head. I don't know if he listens to this. He I'm probably sure. doesn't, but... I oh, hope gosh. he. Li- I'm going to send this to him so he does. <laughs> we'll just make that a reel that only he will son appreciate. Of, son of a bitch has a huge head. And then people will have to look him up. Before we get into what we're going to talk about, I uh, I had a new. I was doing VO2 max intervals this morning. It's my normal Thursday morning routine. I had to eat first this time, like a whole meal, because I just. I would before VO2 max. Well, I typically just have a snack, hmm. but I ate a whole meal. And uh, cause I didn't eat enough yesterday and I woke up like pfft, hungry and uh, I don't know. I did the horse thing <laughs> before I did that anyway. Um, and I, uh, so I, I got into my intervals. I, I felt good. Like I, I felt, I, I was interesting cause I was just, my top speed this week was like five minutes and a uh, five minute, five fifty eight pace. And like last week, my, top speed was like a five minute pace so i wasn't as fast this week but my intervals were consistent and so i was just like i'm always kind of playing with what i say to myself you know and i did the whole focus on driving the ground away and and running and then you know I, i mentioned last week about how you know one of my values is to create excess so i always have reserves should someone need me and um so what it was just in one of the middle of the intervals, I think it was the second interval. It just came to me that I just started, I said to myself, you're a motherfucker that people count on. You have to be able to count on yourself first. And so then the refrain just became count on yourself. You got to count on yourself, Todd. And I just fucking, they let me put the hammer down pretty hard. So I was like, I like that. I think I'm going to keep that one. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, something's off. It was yeah, that you weren't prepared is what was the problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. so. You're the lighting guy. I, you always turn that one on by <laughs> yourself. Don't give me that shit. We have our responsibilities. Don't put that on me. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to, that one was good. I liked that a lot because it's like, yeah. I mean, I think we all know that feeling, right? Like you yeah. can't let yourself down because you know when you do. Yep. And then if you do that, then how is anybody else going to fucking count on you? So yep. I, I really like that little piece of self-talk i had this week this morning i dig it i dig it where do you want to jump into this stuff i mean i don't know i just figured we'd talk about you know we we talk a lot about hybrid training now and and we have been doing it for a long time unofficially and so we've gotten more specific with it and maybe more involved but i think it's been a longer process than either of i realize us realize sometimes and i thought about it like when did i really first try to do stuff like this and it's like it was when i was 18 years old honestly because i was powerlifting training for powerlifting like i did powerlifting workouts all the time and then my plan was to go into the military Mm -hmm. so i would run all the time so i did powerlifting and running and powerlifting and running but like weird 18 year old todd was like you know how we like we were about i was so scared i was gonna lose all my muscle Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but i didn't But that was like the very first time that I really was pulling myself in two different directions. And even with like the first semester in college, I would, I would, football practice wasn't hard enough. So I would run after football practice, go up to the, I'd run up to the campus, from campus up to the football field, run around the track, run bleachers, run around the track, and then run back down. And then I would lift heavy and stuff like that. And so that was, that was like the first experience I, I think I had with this, but then, you know, priority shift and things like that. But I, looking back on that now, it's the first example of like, you can be really fucking strong and run a lot and do whatever. And and like, as long as you have 
you can do both of those things at the same time. Like I didn't do it as intelligently, obviously, as I can yeah. do it now, but like you can, it was the first example that I think that I had that, that you could do that, you know? Yeah. Cause you hear everything else, like, especially back then, think about that. This is the early two thousands. So it's the message is you got to eat every three hours. Don't let yourself get hungry or you're going to lose yeah. your muscle and blah, 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 and all this kind of shit. And so it was just, uh, I was just, when I, when we decided to talk about this, I thought about, well, when did I really first try something like this? And it would have been, it would have been that long ago. So like 20 years ago, it wouldn't be that for me. Why? It'd be like, I was trying to reflect like at that age, a lot of hair gel for you. A yeah. lot of hair gel. I would say like there was, there was in this, I wouldn't consider this hybrid athlete training, but there was a. Although it's interesting because what I'm about to talk about, strength and conditioning has become like a legit aspect of the sport. Mm. But like when I was skateboarding, I, there was a small crossover period where I was like, skateboarding was my life from like elementary school, like up, up through high school. And there was a period of high school where I was lifting and skateboarding. And you probably wouldn't think of skateboarding as like, an endurance maybe some people wouldn't think of it as an endurance event but when you like when i reflect back on that it's like you are just going and going it's like if you're at a skate park and and you go for it's like you think of like a cardio workout you're like a long run maybe three hours two hours but it's not uncommon reflecting back on skateboarding to go spend four or five hours and yeah you're not like non-stop riding but like sure. it's like you you drop in, go do whatever, like through a park, come back, you hang out for a minute. Okay, I'm going to go again. And you do that for hours and hours and hours on end. I wouldn't consider that hybrid athlete training, but that would be the only thing at that age where I'm like, did I kind of mix up two things? Um, for me, it's it's been like a slow evolution. And I think um, in, in thinking about us having this conversation, uh, it's all been kind of accidental. <laughs> like, like it's not like I was like, I'm going to do this hybrid athlete training thing. Um, it's, I, endurance stuff comes easier to me. Yeah, um, I know. and I spent forever. I spent from 16 ish until, you know, truly like focused on, actually it wasn't at 16 that I got focused on strength, 20, about 23 or 24. Like I started lifting at when 16. When you met me. Um, I was what, 24 when I met you? No, you were 23. 23? Yeah. Um, I cared about strength before that. I remember like when I was doing bodybuilding stuff, having certain things like, like I remember squatting 365 for the first time. I remember deadlifting 405 for the first and being like, that's awesome. And I want to do more things like that. But those weren't my goals. They sure. were just things that like happened in the process. Um, and then, so I guess at 23, like going over to the gym in hmm. Belfont with you was like, okay, now I'm going to like start to solely focus on some of these strength things. And I remember that day. Like, like, that was so fun. It was, it was super fun. And like the, the big thing for me was like, <laughs> I wanted to deadlift 500 and then I did that at 25. It was right before you got married. So not 25, like 20, I want to say, I would have been 28. 28. I think I was 28. Um, and, uh, and then I hit like this just sort of like, what am I doing? But it was still just like, well, I lift to get stronger and at, at times like try and get bigger. And I was doing, it was a joke what I was calling conditioning. It'd be like, like call them like the Metcons, Metcons or like, yeah, Meta, but not like CrossFit. They don't like, actually condition you really. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, I think we talked about it on a recent episode. I just remember one day I went out, uh, I was like, I'm going to go run the loop here on Ridgetop. And I came back and I was like red faced from like an eight minute mile or something like that. And I was like, what is going on? Because I, I remember running always came so easy to me. I remember in college, one of our like exercise prescription type classes, we had to go like, do like assessments. We had to go to the track. It's an indoor track and we had to do a mile and a half. And I ran with, um, this cross country dude and we just ran it and we came in at like nine flat and we were both like cool whatever like it was like it was for a class so we weren't like let's go all out remember just being like yeah all right like mile and a half nine minutes cool like like it wasn't a thing you know what i mean 
And then this happened and I was like, what the heck? So that was kind of the first, like, but I still, I remember that day you were in the gym. It's random. This just popped back in my head. You were in the gym and you were shooting your bow. Remember I used to shoot your bow in the old gym? Yep. So for anyone that's like, <laughs> what? We had the, the turf was we had 30 yards, man. The turf. No, we had way more. The turf. It, 30 yards to shoot. Was it? Is that, is that it was all about it was? what you had to shoot? It was 103 yeah. feet from wall to wall. Yeah. So, and the, the wall that he was shooting up against was a uh, cinder block. So it was a, I don't know, what is that concrete, whatever, but cinder block yeah. wall. And I remember I was sitting on the bike and I think it was the same day. It was definitely like the same week. And I remember being like, I need to do more cardio. And I did 30 minutes on the bike and I could go, I could absolutely go on my camera roll and find it. Cause I took a picture of like the screen, the summary at the end on the, at that time it was, a, I don't think we had echo bikes. I think it was the assault bike. I remember thinking like, man, I just did 30 minutes. You know what I mean? Like that's like so much. Um, and uh, it's wild to think that was probably 2021. No, I think it was right before we moved into here. So late, I think it was 2000, it was late 2020 or sometime in 2021. Maybe, I don't know. And then um, the whole thing happened with... Uh, you know, we talked about it, so I'm not going to go into details of it. We talked about it on a recent episode where you told guys that we train um, in the tactical world, like, oh, Chris is going to run with you guys on Tuesday. And then you said to me, hey, you might want to bring your running shoes on Tuesday because I told the guys you're going to run with them. I was like, whatever, I'll run with them. And um, that day was like, cool, whatever, like, did it, kind of hurt. And for them, it was an easy run. And I was just like, dude, like, we need to do something about this. And then that's when I started doing run walk intervals and I bought the curve treadmill and I was just doing stuff. But even then it was like, there's a, there's a perception of doing things like, just like when you're just kind of like, oh, I'm going to go do this. There's like perception of hard. Right. And, and the main thing, all this long winded, uh, stuff to get to something that I heard recently that I'm like, dude, that's it for me. It's like, um, if you have a kid, there's milestones. Certain things happen around certain time frames. Oh, they should begin to form their first words. They'll begin to, that not in this order, they'll begin to like roll over, they'll begin to crawl, they'll begin to stand up and get their balance, they'll start to walk, you know, like, and then in school, we have these very clear like milestones that we should be hitting, learn to read, learn to write, learn to all the, you know. But then you hit, for a lot of people, you hit, your mid twenties, maybe you're done with college. You're done with your higher education. And then you just go into like this cycle. And I'm not saying that like I was purely in that cycle, but I was definitely in a phase of like, all right, I've built, we've built businesses. We're building, we've built businesses. I'm training very consistently, but I'm just like for someone listening and not looking, I'm just doing like a circle with my hamster fingers. Wheel. just like in a hamster wheel doing this stuff. And I don't know how long I would have stayed in that because I, I, I'd be lying if I didn't say like, I enjoy being lean. I enjoy, um, I, so you're vain. That's what you're yes. Admitting. Yeah. I mean, for sure. There was a level of vanity to my training. Guess what? I like feeling capable and I like feeling confident in my skin. Go ahead. What? Everyone is. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's, uh, I, I like, um, I like being capable. I've always liked being capable and I like feeling confident in my skin. Um, but I, I really was lacking purpose with my training. Like there'd be times where I'm just like this, this block of, you know, we had like our annual blocks kind of laid out, like this is fun. But as soon as you dared me to do the Georgia death race, like when I like really committed and lasered in on a goal, like just that, not even doing the thing, just that is the most transformational experience. One of, one of the most transformational experiences, if not the most transformational experience. And there's nothing, it's not me being like, oh, the Georgia death race is so hard. Or it's so like crazy. It's just that. You committed. Outside of building business, like building the gym and what we've done with Strength Faction, but those are a different level of focus. And you're also working with other people where it's just like, you're gonna step up to this line and you're not going to embarrass yourself. You're going to go do really well at this. And then just committing to everything it takes to do that. I hadn't felt that. I wasn't even that focused in school. I didn't give a crap about school. It's because school fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so guess. like, I don't know the last time I felt that, you know, like with skateboarding, it's not there with any team. I played soccer. I played baseball. I never felt that with those things. It was like, all right, like I cared. There'd be 
So what you're saying is you're just self-absorbed. I guess. <laughs> I guess. No, but just it's just, just, it's just totally you. different. I'm just fucking with right? you. Right? And, um, and, uh, I, but I, it's not like, it's like, yes, it's hybrid athlete training. Cause that's like the buzzword, but, uh, man, like with it being jujitsu, I don't consider jujitsu to be like hybrid athlete training. Cause it's not like that's pure. And like, I think most people would consider like total opposite ends, like, like maximum strength and endurance. <laughs> um, but to once again, have first like this goal of, you know what? I want to get my blue belt within a year. That's a pretty laser focused thing. But then now having signed up for competition on July 20th, like it's kind of like the Georgia death race. Like it's, I just think, oh, I'm going to go do it and I'm going to have fun. No, like, yes, yes. But immediately there isn't, there wasn't a conscious like, and now I'm going to act differently. But immediately, I had this like internal. Dude, I, I think it's okay that it's if it's just not about fun though. Like I think that's an okay. It is thing. fun, but it is. But just give me give me a second here. I didn't mean to do that. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was just being funny. the The thing is, is like I think it doesn't always have to be just about fun. Yeah. Like if you know that going into this crucible makes you a different person. And you have to do some shit that you don't want to do. And if it's about growth, like, I think that's one of the things that catches people up is like, oh, it always just has to be about fun. It's like, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it has to be about, I want to fucking be better yeah. and I'm going to do something about it. And it's not just about fun. Like, I think sometimes that turns into fun or it gives you the ability to have more fun in different aspects of your life. But some, it's okay if it's not just about fun, yeah. you know, I yeah. just think it's important because people are like, well, it's not fun. I don't enjoy it. I'm going to bail. It's like, well, fuck you. Why? Like, I mean, you know, like I see both. Like for me, jujitsu has been <clears throat> incredibly fun. Like it's fun, but helps. It, but fun it also helps. fun helps for sure. But it also has its moments of being miserable. And why do I do this? And which, which the training for the ultra had as well. There's days where you leave and you're like, I absolutely suck. I can't believe I felt confident last week. Um, for sure because I'm hot trash that's like, everything though yeah, right? yeah, it yeah. happens to me when I'm shooting my bow like once yeah. a week it's like well I fucking I don't deserve to hunt anything I yeah. shouldn't take this thing with me yeah. and then the next day I'm dialed in it just happens you yes know? Um, and so like I just uh, I forget where it was that I had heard the conversation about like we just don't have there's there's no adult milestones and then and then it was a podcast I can't remember who it was but then they were like well there, there kind of are like if you look at like you get married, you have a kid. Like there's yeah. like these, you get the promotion, but like, no, I'm talking about some shit that shakes you up. Those you aren't know? necessarily self-determined either. It's like, sometimes it's, they are, but they aren't. Yeah. Where it's like, these are societal milestones, not something that you necessarily created for yourself. Like for sure you can sit down and say, parse those two things apart and say, I want this thing because I want it. And it also aligns with the way that society says that people should progress. Yeah. But it's like, those aren't totally just internal things all the time. Like maybe biologically wired for sure with, with some things, but like to sit down and say, like, it's not just the, well, you graduated from college, you got a decent job, you got so you found someone to marry, you had a kid. It's like, what do you fucking want? You yeah. know? And I think that that it's a, it's tough for people to say that sometimes because first of all, there's a, there's part of it that feels selfish, you know? And then, which is, I don't know okay and i think that there's the other part that um it doesn't feel like it's necessarily useful and i think one of the things that we're wired to do is like this thing must be of total use in some way and it and this is like i'm gonna i'm about to contradict myself and say like well sometimes it's just because you fucking want it and it yeah. doesn't have to be total totally for some kind of a use you know and i think that that's where we get caught up and we don't allow ourselves to set milestones like that just because we want to try something or we want to enjoy it. It's because, well, you know, this doesn't have anything to do with my job or it doesn't have anything to do with my family. And it's like, well, I don't know, man, like my death counter says 87 and I'm fucking 38, you know? And like, sometimes you just, I oh, fuck, I hope I make it to 87. I don't know if I buy it. I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to make it that long. Once but. you told me that it's like, it would be the same if I plugged mine in and anyone that like, cause it's just based on the average. No, lifespan. it's different stuff, but like, but I don't know. Well, you also have to keep in mind, and and granted, I come from like a family of 
hard drinking, hard yeah. living hicks yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. Like one dude on my dad's side of the family has made it out of his sixties. Yeah. Fucking one. That's crazy. So I, I think I'll make it out of my sixties, but I don't fucking know, you know? Yeah. So anyway, um, tangent, that was tangential. No, I just, so like, I know we're going to talk about like the whole, like our origin of hybrid athlete, but as much as like, I want to help people go that route at the end of the day, like the thing that before it was like, hybrid athlete training is just like to be the type of person that can say yes. Sure. But for me now it's like, it just feels so damn good to have a date on the calendar. And we've done a full episode on that before. Yeah. Um, and I think if, as it continues to expand, it's just learning. It's just, it could be a number of different things, but I, I, I think, you know, like we talk about the table of stable growth. I think you could, you can, make the argument for like learning and expanding in all four legs or, or, you know, people have different categories, but, um, but, uh, there's something about physical development, learning oh, new, sure. learning new skills, like developing your capacities. There, there's something about, um, feeling like, uh, just not that you walk around being like, uh, like you're settled into yourself because you know you just feel confident yeah, you just feel in. confident you know and every now and then things happen that like it rightfully so and it's good to have happen where it's just like doosh, you know you're like oh okay yeah, sure, but then sure. that just kind of makes you there, i think there's two reactions to that like there's the oh i knew i shouldn't have been caught i knew i like there's that some people get that voice. i think you got to explain that better dude i don't know exactly what you mean so there's some people that uh don't have real confidence but oh, sure. but they do things they see fast progress and then they start to get like a little like like a little confidence going but then at the first negative thing oh, happening sure, sure. they very quickly go like oh like this was so stupid i can't believe you know what i mean and though yeah. and it's like um whereas i think sometimes something comes along and like kind of knocks you down a peg and you just go cool there's levels like yeah I, I well, want to understand why that happened. I want to, under, you know what I mean? You have and, to be pretty solid in yourself to be able to do that. Yeah. I, I used to be, I, I don't really have uh, heroes anymore. I think you kind of outgrow that. And I think we had a good private conversation. About yeah. That. Sometimes you just got to like my, my thing is like, you just got to kill your fucking heroes. Like you got to And by that, I mean like you take whatever you can from these people that you maybe looked up to when you were younger and you integrate those parts into yourself and then you fucking let it go and you're just your own person. But when I was younger, um, one of my heroes was Pat Tillman. Yep. And, um, <clears throat> I remember I, I, first time I saw him, I was a little kid and he was playing in, I forget a bowl game and he made a play at the end of the game. And like, I liked him cause he was one of the smaller guys on the field. And like, it turned out that I ended up being about the fucking same size as him and then played the same position in college and wore his number and all that kind of stuff. But I read, um, eventually read John Krakauer's book about him where, where men win glory. And he had this thing where he just like, had to constantly challenge himself, like in weird fucking ways. Like he grew up in just, in central California, just outside of San Jose, I believe. And so towards the, maybe towards the foothills. And I guess they, he was on a hike one time with his friends and there was this crevice and everyone was scared to jump it. And it like, it was a jump. It wasn't fucking around, you know? And, um, he like went up to it and like had to walk back and like, couldn't figure. And like the people that were with him understood that like Pat had to jump that he had to do it. And he eventually did it. And what, they explain in the book, I think Krakauer quotes one of Pat Tillman's friends and said, whether we were there or not, Pat was going to yeah. jump that, you know? And I think that that's one of the things that, you know, some things are, some things like that are built into people and sometimes people have to find it. But like, I think there's an, I think there is an element of that in all of us and giving yourself the opportunity to train that hard and in different ways to like, I know that I'm not happy if I don't put my foot on the line frequently, even just going out and doing something like a, a VO two max workout where I have to talk to myself. Yeah. Like I remember when I was leaving Connecticut, when I left Connecticut and moved back to Pennsylvania for a yeah. while, <laughs> I had you send me a challenge yeah. 
every day or every week or something like that because i was like i'm not gonna fucking sit here and fester like i need someone to push me and um and so i think that that's an important i I think this just illustrates some of the things that you were saying like that's an important aspect of this is like there is that confidence because you went out and you fucking showed yourself and you like just even from the self-talk that i talked about at the beginning of the episode you can count on yourself and I think that that's where that deep confidence comes from yep. of us, of why we train the way that we do, where we go out and do long endurance runs or long rucks and lift and show ourselves and go do shit that normal people wouldn't do. Cause it just, man, at every level, like from your bones into your fucking soul, man, it just settles you. And I think that that's, I think that's why we do it. And I think that's why I said like, yes, fun is an important component of everything. And I think it helps if you find something fun. But that's why things don't always have to be about fun. Sometimes it's like, this makes me the motherfucker I want to be, yeah. you know? And I think that that's an important part of it. But I think like keyword being training, hybrid athlete training, for me, it's like, because we're talking about this like capabilities. Right. That's what hybrid athlete training, like why I do it. Because going all in on any one thing makes you a liability. I think you're right about that. Yeah. So... And I don't think anyone wants to be a liability, but it's like, think about like your, I'm not saying literally your friend, but like, think about your friend that maybe spends a lot of time in the gym and is just super strong. And you're like, man, can you come help me move? Dude, that used to be me. But they need to sit down after carrying a couch from yeah. the living room to the truck. And you're like, I thought you were in shape. And you're like, well, being in shape has different meanings. There was a period of time, <laughs> a, a, a short period of my time in my life that that was definitely me because yeah. all I cared about was powerlifting. Yeah. You know? And that like cool you're really good at that one thing and genuinely if that's if you're into that awesome like i'm not minimizing any one of those things but just talking about like personally i don't want there to be a massive hole in my capabilities dude that's like like, i was sitting down i was talking with leanne the other day and uh her her two of her sons um her two sons both train mixed martial arts right yeah they're both awesome so they drive they drive down into they drive down into the valley to oakdale uh, a couple few times a week to train. A couple few. It's a couple. That's two to three. Few, two to three times. To three. Yeah, a couple few. We all know what it means now. <laughs> and uh, and I was thinking like, because I started. I'm in. I'm in a in a one of those phases where I'm sitting and looking at like, well, where are my fucking holes, man? You know, it's like I'm in really good shape. You know, I've I've good endurance. I'm strong. I have a lot of things. It's like you're gonna do jujitsu. Nope. This is the episode. No, 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 no. <laughs> that is not what's happening. But I have not. And I think this is, and I sincerely think this is a value of mine and I've done it in different ways, but I haven't really trained in violence in like six years at all since I stopped doing Muay Thai. I think that was 2018. And I was like, so I texted Leanne. I was like, Hey, you think Evan would hit mitts with me? Do you have mitts at the house? And she was like, Oh my God. He would love that. I think we do have mitts. I was like, okay, because if you don't, I'm going to order some because yeah. we're going to fucking hit mitts all summer while I'm That's out there. awesome. Yeah. Because it's awesome. just like, I look at like, well, nine, ten, granted, some, uh, first of all, I'm 38 years old. I'm not going to look for altercations. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. But <laughs> second of all, sometimes there's shit that you just have to, you have to do something about yeah. and you can't get away from it. It's a, it's a narrow sliver of possibility, but it is there. And it's like most dudes, I will fucking trounce them. But there's always the chance that, like, your skill needs to be a little bit sharper, buddy. Yeah. You know? You know my litmus test, though, too, right? Uh, remind me. Whether or not I'm going to throw hands with somebody. Oh, if they have cauliflower ear? No. Well, first of all, if they have cauliflower ear, I do not throw hands. <laughs> I'm like, hey, we can figure this out. <laughs> I throw a leg kick. Oh, yeah, if they check it. If they check if they it, check we're it. like, okay, all right, let's talk. Or, one... I just took your fucking leg from you. You're in a lot of big, you're in a lot of trouble yeah. or they really think about what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. You know, so that's yeah. my, that's my litmus test. We'll see. There's a, uh, there's someone that I train with in jujitsu who does like uh, protective, like, I guess like dignitary type, like protection work. He is huge, huge. And he said he was out doing something recently and someone looked him up and down and said, what, are you going to punch me? He goes, no, nah, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Oh, uh, that's so good. No, no, I'm going to shoot like, you. He has all the capabilities in the world in the world to, to punch you and to choke you. and everything. But no, I'm just going to shoot you if I need to do something. Like, <laughs> what, are you nah, going to punch me? <laughs> I have a so, high-speed hole punch, yeah, and that's what we're going to use. Uh, it's good to be capable, but we're going to play the legal game here. And if you go near him, I'm just going to shoot you. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. 
I think it's two to the body, one to the face is usually how that works out. So. <laughs> but that's what our training provides. I mean, that's what, like, that's what, um, that's the way I think about things, uh, is just not all of the time, but are we covering all of our bases? Right? Oh, for sure. And not, not from a skill standpoint, like in, in, for those that have checked out the email series that we just put out and, and you and I have talked about this, it's like, of course there's going to be skill gaps, but that's what I think is exciting. And that's what I think hybrid athlete training better equips you to do than specializing in any one thing, unless you were somehow going into something that say you were doing powerlifting, that was just like raw strength is going to be the thing that's best for whatever skill you're matching that with. But I think even then, you're going to be kind of lopsided in terms of the yeah. ability to say yes to whatever people hit you up. Hey, we're going to go do this thing. Do yeah, you don't want to go? Lopsided. Like that's the thing. If, if unless there's a skill training correctly, like you should feel like, yeah, like, and, and I doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be elite at anything, but, no, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be fucking mediocre. Either. No, I think yeah. that you can safely predict that's what, when, with uh, time that you can be in the top third of pretty much anything. When I fucking um, posted the video, of me split squatting 400, um, Drew, the, the one of my human better pack meal clients, the one that I'm training for the yep. ultra, he texts me, <laughs> he goes, I wonder if that's what that guy means by mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe. Yeah. Was well, that mediocre motherfucker? Come do it. It would probably me. be your running. No, yeah. <laughs> well, that is mediocre. <laughs> I'm not good. I'm but he said good. mediocre at everything. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I would beat that guy's ass. <laughs> I would laugh if that was Mike Connolly. Bring I'd it full fucking circle. beat his ass, Mike, too. <laughs> Mike Connolly. Might be. I'll just tickle him. Anyway. Anything I, yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you. Everything. <laughs> everything. Just everything. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> cool. Anything else? I'm, well, we never do this. Someone here at the gym said, you guys never promote anything on the podcast and we don't we don't read anything coming in we don't read anything going out oh we should yeah um i'm gonna put a link to the uh the hybrid tips email series what do they get with this chris so they get eight tips in five days um but then that will also put you on to uh our email list and we're not going to spam you we're going to send you um other awesome information valuable so valuable awesome hybrid athlete training and if you're like thinking of uh, hopefully this whole conversation like you wouldn't think this but if it's just gonna be the stereotypical like lift hard and run it's not that it's it's genuinely genuinely about training in a way that uh you know voids any major gaps in your in your capabilities and uh yeah i don't know nuance 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 it's just there's more nuance to it than just lift hard and run. Yeah. And then we'll say that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So if that interests you, I'll put a link into the show notes. I'm fucking right it interests you. Click that thing. Rock and roll. Anything else? No, I'm fucking done. Mm-hmm.